Hello everyone, this is Ben Ryder from the Academy of Gaming, Film and Animation and what we're going to look at today is how to import a static mesh from Maya into Unreal. So we've already looked at exporting it out as an FBX, but what we want to look at now is how we can actually get that into Unreal, bring in the materials, set up the physics and have it working as a game object um, that simulates physics and be, can be picked up within the world. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually set up a folder called Adventure Game Assets. And then from there, we're gonna create a few root folders. Uh, one is going to be called props. And from that, weapons. And there'll be a few ones in here that we'll look at a little bit later. But for now, we're just gonna go with sword. And this is just to start setting up our class system so we can start thinking about what inherits from each of them. So uh, here in a sword, we're going to just simply look at uh, bringing in that FBX file here. So if we left click and drag that into the level. Now it's also important to make sure that you have sized up all of your assets so they're at least consistent size. Because this is Maya, this is working in centimeters. So I'm gonna actually increase the scale a little bit, but we're gonna check, uh, make sure that skeletal mesh is unchecked because there's no skeleton for this particular sword. Um, we're gonna keep all of these the same. I'm gonna just gonna change this to 20 and then go ahead and import and we'll see how this looks in the size. Uh, we may get this error, don't stress too much about that, it tends to happen with a lot of FBXs and things like that. As long as there's no red lines, we should be okay. Uh, so if we bring that into the level there, there it is, it's not looking too bad. Let's just go ahead and yeah, the size for that isn't looking too bad either, which is really good. So that's what the object should look like. Um, however, I can see that there's no roughness map on that. So when we bring objects in, we wanna to check to make sure our materials have come through all right. Um, so in this material instance here, we can see that it has the emission glow, has the color, and it has the normal map, but it doesn't have the roughness map. So we're just gonna fix that just by now, uh, just by bringing that roughness map into here first and then attaching it to there. So if we go, back to our folder. So it's images and we look at our roughness map. We're going to left click and drag that down here first. And there it is. And then we're gonna left click and drag it into the material and plug that in there and then go save. Cool, excellent. All right, and now as you can see, just a little bit more reflective. So that's good. All right then, so that's pretty much all there is to importing in a static mesh. Um, however, we need to consider now um, the physics of it. So obviously this object may be something that we can pick up um, or it may be something that physically reacts in the world uh, to the character. Now, In order to make sure of that, um, we need to first make sure that the collisions are correct. So when we're looking at Unreal, um, we have two different types of collisions. We have our uh, simple collision and then we have our complex collision. Now, when we're working with physics, we tend to use the um, uh, simplified version of the physics, which means sort of like a, if you imagine a cardboard box being wrapped around it, that's what we tend to use. So if we have a look here, inside of Unreal Engine 4, it is a little bit different. Uh, so if we have a look at these, you should be able to see simple collision that looks like this. So this is what the physics will be acting to. And then we also have uh, complex collisions and that's this one here. So if you're using this more for architecture, like say stairs or an archway, you'd use that complex collision. Now, as it is, we're going to just simply use the simple collision and that simple collision box doesn't look like it's gonna be anything that we need to necessarily um, change. So uh, to that end, we'll go save. And when it's in the level here, just to test that out, if we go here to physics and go simulate physics, then when we press play, we can see that that falls to the ground there and reacts to the player going over the top of it. Okay, so let's do something a little bit more interesting with it now. Let's make it so that when we roll over the top of it, um, we can just have a button that we can press that allows us to pick up this object. Um, now we're not gonna look at the animation for the character to pick up the object. We'll look at that a little bit later when we get two characters. Um, but for now, we're just going to make it so that you press a button and it disappears. 
Um, so this is the static mesh, these are the materials. Um, we're now gonna create a blueprint class. And we're gonna stick to active for now. Like I said later on, we'll look at pawns and characters when we start looking at character animations. But for now, we're just gonna go with an actor. I'm gonna call this one VP underscore sword. And we're going to actually make this specifically sword pickup because it's going to be a different actor to the one that when we're holding it, to the one when we're actually uh, interacting with it. And the reason for that is because there'll be a different script applied to this one as there will be to the actual object itself and different collisions and all kinds of different things like that. So if we go here to uh, our um, blueprint editor, we start to see that we've got an empty space here for our viewport. We have our components and assets here. We have our variables down here and our details to here. We're first gonna go add and go to static mesh because that's what we're looking at in here, a static mesh. We're gonna call this one sword. And then if we go over to the right hand side here, we can see it says static mesh none. We can now pick our static mesh and if we type in sword, there it is. So we click on there, that is there in the um, viewport. But now we need a box collision that will detect our player and then run a script that makes this disappear and then tells our player that they do in fact have a sword. So to do that, we're going to add another component. This is going to be the box collision. So the box collision uh, needs, should be put around the object like so. And that should, that should work just fine. So we'll go compile. Uh, now there shouldn't be anything else that we're going to need on this. I have made this a parent to the sword so that when the sword is moving around with the physics, it doesn't get left behind. Um, so we're gonna go here to event graph. This is our um, place where all of the instructions and scripting happens. So with this box selected, if we roll our mouse wheel down to the very bottom, we'll see all the events that we can cast on there. So if you've ever heard of uh, scripted events, that's kind of what this is. This needs a, an event, a begin, play, something that's going to happen um, to trigger all the other scripts to happen. So in this one, we're gonna look at on component begin overlap, which basically means when something overlaps this, um, do a thing. Now we need to specify exactly what it is that's gonna overlap this. So I'm gonna future-proof this by not just going with the mannequin, I'm actually gonna go with any character um, class. So I'm gonna type in here, cast to character. I'm not gonna go with class, but I'm just gonna go with character because they all inherit from this one. And then I'm gonna go here to object. And uh, then just to test this out, I'm just going to go destroy actor. This is going to be targeted at the self, which means it's going to disappear. So when I uh, left click and drag that object now into the level uh, and we press play, we're going to notice that uh, one of them sits there, um, but the other one, the one that's floating in the sky there, when I cross over it, it goes there. Now you will notice some weird things happening with the physics. So you wanna use this uh, sparingly at best. Um, and there are a few things that we'll talk about there to stop those sorts of glitches from happening. But for now, we can see that we've got a very simple script already happening that allows us to pick this up. Um, but what we need to do now is we need to make sure that um, this only happens if we press a button. Um, so we're gonna get rid of that one and we're now going to go enable input. Because this is an actor, it doesn't, um, by default accept any inputs like pressing E or anything else like that. So we have to say when this overlaps and only when it overlaps, um, allow us to actually press a button to do something. It's gonna ask for a player controller. We can just search for that one, player controller. And zero means that the first player is spawned. Because it's a single player game, this isn't a problem. It's basically going to just grab that first player controller. And now we're gonna make sure that we can't do anything with it if we walk away from it. So I'm gonna select the box again, go to this next one, end overlap, bring this over and say, cast to character again. And this time it will be disable input. Down here. 
go compile. And now we can put in any input we want. I'm going to go with the E key. Uh, and that is going to allow us to then only pick up the object if we choose to pick up the object. So then destroy actor. Cool. So now when we walk up to it, if I walk away from it and I press E, nothing happens. But if I'm over the top of it and I press E, it disappears. Um, which is exactly what we want. We want an object that we can press and have it disappear. Cool, now that's great. We've looked at how we can use it as a static mesh, how we can use it as an object with a simple pickup script. Now we're gonna look at how we can use it as an object that the character is holding. Um, so there's not too much that we're gonna to need to change about that. Um, but we will duplicate this, and instead of calling it pickup, we will call it prop. Cool, we will uh, get rid of these because we don't want anything happening to it when it collides. Uh, and we'll get rid of that box collision there. So it's just this sword here. And we're going to go down and change it to no collision for this one, just for now. We'll put in collision later when we want to have hit um, events, but for now, it's going to have no collision there. So now we're going to go to our character. Now later on, when we get our dwarf character in, we'll do this all again. But for just now, I just want to demonstrate how this works. So we're going to go here to our characters, uh, mannequin, and we're going to go to rigs, and sorry, it's just taking a bit of time to load up here. That's the physics asset, control rig, control rig, control rig. This is a little bit different from the. There we are, that's the one I want, the skeletal mesh. Because we want to create a socket in the hand. So if I search here for hand, we're going to make this in the character's right hand, and the left hand will save for a shield. So right hand there, right click, add socket. What this socket will do is allow us to be able to spawn an actor in there, uh, in this case, a sword. So if we now go to our character and for this we will actually bring in a character so we can actually start seeing them that's a third person a blueprints third person character there edit so by clicking on here I can now edit the third person character again we won't go into too much of this we'll look at this more when we start looking at characters and creating our own character but just for now I want to create that socket and have that actor spawn there so I'm going to go here to mesh and go add child actor I call this one hand r and here it's going to ask for a parent socket so we're going to go here hand r socket and we can see that has spawned right there it's actually more on the wrist so we may move this um, but first things first uh, we need to now look at how this is going to look in the character's hand. So I'm going to go here to sword and go prop. And as we can see, it's rotated a little bit incorrectly. So we're just going to fix that now and then pull down close enough. Good. So now when we have that as a character, they now have a sword in their hand when they're running hasn't quite really, we might want to angle it differently so it doesn't stab them when they're running. But again, that's all we really wanted to look at here. We wanted to look at how we can make it so that it's there. Um, we can go into the, in the next video into scripting it so that we can actually have that spawn only when um, the character is there, but that's starting to look at more advanced techniques. It's more than what you need to know. Um, what we really want to look at next in the next part of the videos is going to be looking at the skeletal mesh. So how we can get a skeletal animated mesh to work with this.